Hello, my name is Amy Ecker and welcome to my channel. So today I am doing a YouTube tag and it's kind of about goals. So if you want to see or hear a little bit more about me, stay tuned. Okay, so I was tagged in another get to know me kind of video by Sabrina the Makeup Mom. And so here is some of the tag questions she has chosen. So it says, name three goals that you set for your life. My first one is that, or one of the three, is that I try to live life as positive as possible. Um, there are times that things get in the way of life and really hit you upside the head. And one of the things that I do to try to help that when it, it happens is that every time a negative thought comes across my head, I try to replace it with a positive one. And immediately a negative one will wipe it out. And so then I'll replace it with a positive one. And so I'll keep doing that until my brain settles and pulls myself away from being negative into being positive and getting kind of um, centered again. So, I do like to live a positive life. I don't like to have turmoil, etc. The other goal in life is to, I have a, I guess I have, you could say, not I guess, I do have a regular um, nine to sometimes nine job, but I do have a, a regular weekly job and I have a group of people that technically you could say work for me. Um, I tend to like to be a servant leader, so what I like to do is get to know each one of the people on my team and then find out what is their goal in life and what do they want to accomplish. And then I try to help get them there by being a servant leader. What do they need for me to help them move the needle and to be more successful than they have previously? So that's one of my biggest goals in life is basically kind of what I do in a normal kind of job setting, not on the YouTube channel. The um, other third goal in life is, and these were not in any order, is really enjoying the journey of life. I, I have to say in my early 20s and teens, I. I just wasn't a very happy person. And I was lucky enough to meet my husband now in my mid twenties and relationships are tough and hard. I mean, we've had 17 years together, so it, they haven't all been pretty. They haven't all been pretty. But the one piece for, for Rob and I is that we, we have a genuine appreciation for each other. And our goal is to um, not go back to that bad time again in, a, in a, the marriage, but really kind of appreciate, appreciate each other for what we bring to the marriage and appreciate each other's qualities and characteristics and enjoy each other. And I will say when we got back on track, it our marriage now with that focus and that goal has been so much better than when we first met. We have the same similar goals with the, the kids that we've mentored in life. And we have a good eight of them that we talk to on a regular basis that we've mentored. And then we have also rescued animals. And that is a huge goal for us is to change those animals lives that someone tried to destroy or hurt and we try to bring them back and let them know that humans aren't bad and to give them a forever retirement home to really be spoiled and yeah, they're really spoiled, let me tell you. So when we take in a, a broken animal, they lead an amazing life until it's their time to cross the rainbow bridge. And that is a, a joint passion and goal for me and my husband. Um, okay, so the next question is, are you passionate about any particular thing or charity? So I mentioned in some videos that Rob and I have mentored, we've had the awesome opportunity of being a part of the Georgia Rotary Student Program. It's an ambassadorial scholarship that brings 
kids worldwide to Georgia. They go to school in Georgia for a year and people are picked as host families. We've been blessed with having to, um, that opportunity several times. So we've had kids in Poland and Sweden and Denmark and we've been associated with Russia. We've had them in Bulgaria. I didn't mention Sweden. So we, we've just had an opportunity to work with these kids and become their mentors. And in fact, one of our kids, so to speak, has had their first baby. She's not a kid anymore. But um, so we have our first international grandchild. And that program brings these kids together. They have conclaves once a month. They team build. And it doesn't matter if their countries are warring or it's just a great opportunity for these kids to really understand that it doesn't matter if your countries like each other or not, people are still people with just different, maybe cultures or some differences, but at the core, most people are great. And so they get a chance to see that and really just learn about another culture. And we've had the amazing ability to be a part of the GRSP and meet some fantastic kids. And we've also got to meet their parents and really have enjoyed those friendships across the sea. And hopefully we've also been able to show them that not all Americans are bad either. Do you have any hobbies? If so, do they tie into your goal? Hobbies for me um, are is YouTube. I mean, I pro this is probably the most time consuming hobby that I have. It's, it, you may watch a video for 10, 15 minutes, but you do not realize what goes on behind the camera. It's, it's a lot of work, both getting prepped and then trying to edit, etc. So there's a lot of time in having a YouTube channel. So that's my number one hobby. I do really enjoy reading because I, believe it or not, am an introvert. So, you know, even though I am an introvert, I can push myself into being an extrovert. It's just not my natural fallback style, but because I'm an introvert, I really, really enjoy reading. It's, it's just a passion of mine. I get to go on journeys through these different books and see these characters and places. And it's just, it's a wonderful experience if you have ever gotten a hold of a great author that takes you on a mental journey. I far rather read than I would watch TV because my mind makes the books way better than anyone could ever put on screen. How about that? As a child, what did you want to do when you grew up? Um, I wanted to be a teacher for a little while. <coughs> my poor little brothers had to be my students and I'd put out papers that I, you know, copies from whatever my work was. And then if they did good, I'd grade their papers. Um, I'd give them a little happy faces. <laughs> If they did bad or were misbehaving, they got sad faces. Um, that's still kind of a joke after all these years that one brother always ended up with a lot more sad faces than the other. That's all I'm saying. And later I, I really enjoyed playing with um, hair and cutting and learning how to perm because perms were such a big thing. I do remember ruining my cousin's hair with a perm. We just ran out of solution. Yeah, that wasn't good. And then I remember my mom, my my ninth grade year, put she ran out of curlers and grabbed these little teeny tiny ones and I had like frizz. So yeah, the perming thing was quite interesting. And how does that relate to today? So it's kind of interesting. Both of those aspects relate to my life today. I am a sales leader and part of what I'm passionate about is helping my team learn and grow and achieve things that they never thought was possible before and to watch those milestones and watch someone grow and change and gain self-confidence is absolutely one of the most fun things to do ever um, if they have a challenge with something they're working on kind of and they're stuck they can bring it to me i can kind of try to pull it apart and put it back together again and show them how, what the thought process was behind that. And so that's been really fun. So that passion or that thought process as a child of wanting to help someone learn and teach them something is what I do every day. 
And then as far as the beauty piece of it, thank goodness I'm not into perms anymore, but I do love YouTube. I love putting together this channel. I love, you know, kind of the research or trying new products or just playing in general, not knowing what I'm gonna get into with colors and a palette and just start playing. Um, so, you know, that was, that's kind of fun. And then as a child, my, one of my earliest memories was, you know, trying to put makeup on my mom and I couldn't have been very old. And I remember kind of swiping it out and yeah. And then I was devastated when she wouldn't take that out of, go out of the house with my big um, swipes. What's funny is, well, my mom wasn't much older than me. She was only 15 when she had me. So in some ways it felt like we kind of grew up together, but so I was experienced or exposed to makeup because my mom used to love doing makeup and she really did a great job and, and what really took care of herself at that time. And so it's, um, I think that's where my lo love for it kind of came from. If you ever had a chance to see my grandmother, her mother, my grandmother is extremely beautiful. Um, she's been gorgeous all of her life. She's always been well put together. Hair is always in the right spot. Clothes to the nines. My grandfather and her always um, matched. So it's kind of interesting. As I got older, I'm not as a perfectionist at all as my grandmother. Oh my goodness. Um, not at all. But I do enjoy dressing up. I do enjoy playing with my hair and my makeup and looking at clothes, etc. So I think I got aspects of both of that from both women. Uh, if I could collab with any brands, who would they be? So I really would like the biggest joy in my life would be to collab with Marlena from The Makeup Geek because I am, I've always kind of, I don't want to say enamored because that's the wrong word. That almost sounds creepy. But she was one of the first uh, YouTube people that I found. And I really liked the fact that she was creative and she could put together beautiful colors. And I remember there was one look, I think, for St. Patty's Day that she did with greens. And I thought, oh, heck no, I can't believe, you know, what is this going to be? So by the end of the video, she had this beautiful look and that I wanted to recreate for St. Patty's Day. And so I went to the store and bought these green colors. And as I was sitting there looking at them, I kept thinking, how is this gonna work? Like, they're pretty in the pan, but how is this gonna work? And I just did what she instructed. And I was like, oh my gosh, this like really came out good. But it's all because of, of for color combinations and to not give up you know you kind of keep playing with it and, and something beautiful always happens so she is someone that I really liked as far as um, technique and color schemes the other thing I like about her she was a teacher and she is a self-made woman um, she has the cutest personality she will explain when she's running into diversity and you know she tells that on her youtube channel um so i think you get a real side from her both you know when she is struggling or what she is successful at and i look at that as everyone has struggles in their life period but it's what you do to overcome it and i think she's a great role model for that she just it doesn't matter what life throws at her she finds a way to get around over, under, etc. So she's kind of the first YouTuber I came across, but she's also the most inspirational one. So I would really like to one day, that would be my dream is to collab with her. And Marlena or Makeup Geek, if y'all are watching and you want to take on an old lady and you want to collab, pick me, pick me. Okay, so if you had your own brand, what would it be? I love playing with eyeshadows and um, oh, eyelashes. I, I love eyes. I think they are more than the soul to, or the windows to the soul. So for me, the makeup is the draperies to the window to the soul. 
So I just, I love eye looks. Those are what I'm gravitate, I gravitate to. I'm not, you know, blushes, eh. Lipsticks, eh. But eyes, that is, again, what you really notice on a person the first time you see them. It's, it's what can definitely intrigue you. So my brand would be around that. And I would take my initials for my married last name. Um, so it would be A-S-K. Ask Cosmetics. And there's so many different fun things I could do with that. So anyways, Ask Cosmetics is what, not ask, ask cosmetics is what I would want my brand to be and now that I just got said that and it sounded like ass I may need to change the name of my company my my pretend company if your career took off and you became famous who would you who would you take with you um really no one different than who I have in my life now I mean I've got my brother and my sister-in-law and their kids, um, my husband, my auntie, my little sister, and some amazing friends. And so those are the same people that I would want with me if I ever became successful or famous. I, I can't see myself not wanting them around because A, they bust my chops, like they're real. And when I get a little off-centered, they bust my chops. They don't tell me what I want to hear. And they give me their opinions and why. And on the other side, they are so loving and supporting. And each and every one of them I've enjoyed laughing with. So in my life, I love to laugh, laugh, laugh a lot. Like over the top laughing. Probably at the most inappropriate things I'm still laughing because everything in life is funny if you really look for it. So I think I would keep all those people around me no different than now because I enjoy them. I love, I just love each and every one of them. My ideal place to live, I've had the opportunity to live in different spots in the United States and each one of them are special to me for that reason. I mean, I, I've lived on the West Coast, um, I've lived in the Midwest, I've lived in the mountains and now I'm in flatlands. And each place is near and dear to my heart. So it's not necessarily the place as it is the people that you surround yourself with. So as long as I have my husband, my dogs, and I still have the opportunity to travel and see the rest of the people that I love and respect, it doesn't matter where I live. Now, if it was internationally, I really like Sweden. Like, really, really like Sweden. You, It's the, one of the cleanest towns. The people are so nice. I went grocery shopping and they had a wall of cheese, like literally a wall of cheese. Anyone that knows me knows I can't eat food unless it has cheese. If it doesn't have cheese, I'm probably not going to eat it. They had a wall of cheese. I need to move to Sweden for cheese alone. And there's some great people there. One of my kids from Sweden had her there for, with us for three years. She has amazing parents and a brother and a sister. And yeah, so I would absolutely have a blast in Sweden. And it says, have you attempted to reach these goals in the past? And if so, how many times? So life is a big goal. Um, to me, you don't just meet a goal and stop. Um, so I'll use kind of business as a way of maybe explaining goals in general for me. So. At work um, we have goals and we have stretch goals and so it's fun to try to figure out all those pieces on how do you bring it together to meet your goal then when you meet your goal it's like you gotta have time to celebrate it is so much fun to meet the goal but you don't want to just stop there you've done it you've achieved it so what you're gonna give up and die heck no what you do is you make a new goal and you stretch yourself further. And it's amazing that every time that you reach a goal, whatever it is, it is fun to celebrate. And then you get a chance to say, okay, I can, I've done this. Now what can I do? And you make a new goal and you work at it. It may take, it may take years, it may take months. If it's only a few days, it's not a stretch goal. But 
you continually work at it, you cultivate it, you, you build on it, you get better and better. And then when you eventually meet that stretch goal, it's like, oh my gosh, I never thought that I could attain this. And here I am. So you celebrate once again, and then you decide, all right, what's next? What's possible? When you first started your goal, you may not have thought that if you kept stretching yourself where you would end up, and that's the beauty of goals. So for me, I just believe in continuing to try and cultivate, and one of my sayings is dial in for success. So as you reach your goals and you're getting better and you're getting comfortable and it's becoming natural, then you stretch it again and you dial in for success a little bit more. And that's just kind of how I believe in life anyways. I mean, you can take out work and you can put in um, being a better parent. You can take being a better parent out. You can put in being a better spouse. Um, you can take that out. You can put in your finances. Um, really and truthfully, when it comes to goals, you kind of just take out whatever the one word is and put in the one you want to concentrate on and you just keep working at getting better. So anyways, that is the end of the goal questions. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any thoughts, questions, comments, etc., please put those below. I love to hear. And you know what's coming next. You have a choice, so make it a great one. Until next time.